Hello, this is Matthew Randall, and welcome to tutorial two in match moving. Um, with this footage that we've got uh, here, um, I'm just going to have a sort of closer look at it in uh, After Effects. That's just because I've got it open. I could just do this in any media player. Uh, but if I look in After Effects, right. Um, what we can see is we, we're doing a nodal pan, and um, the key thing is this is a not just a, any pan, it's a nodal pan. So the camera's panning around the nodal point of the lens. Uh, that means that the, the, the camera's not, we're not, we're, we're actually rotating the camera exactly on the point where the light beams cross inside the lens, okay? Um, um, that's really important to understand because uh, what, what, that means in in our virtual camera, all we have to do is replicate the camera rotating on a spot. If if it's not on the nodal point, then actually what's actually happening is the camera is either rotating in front of or behind the nodal point. So it's not actually just rotating; it's kind of arcing, and uh, obviously that's going to be harder to replicate in a uh, virtual environment. So that's the first thing to be aware of with this footage. Next thing I want to sort of show you is some of the kind of drawbacks with what we've got here. So uh, one of the drawbacks I've got is I can't see the entire wall here in uh, one go. Okay, I can't see the entire wall here um, in one shot, um, which is a shame because uh, which is a shame because. I can't use this as a reference point to kind of work out the distance of my camera. Okay. Um, the other issue I've got is I haven't got uh, is I haven't uh, actually what I could have done is measured the wall, you know, from say the corner to uh, uh, one of these markers here or to the where this cable comes out that would have been useful to do the other thing I haven't done is measure the height of the camera uh, and another thing I could have done is actually triangulate the position of the camera so I could have taken two points say this point here and the corner of the of the of the floor and then triangulated the position of the camera uh, I could have took this other corner here and, and used that to triangulate it as well um, what I have got though is the size of this wall um, which isn't going to be too much too useful to us because we can't see the entire wall but I have got the size of the table again what I should have done is measured really the distance of the table from the wall that would have helped as well if I measured it from that wall and from that wall that would have been a useful sort of visual aid but again I didn't do that in fact uh, I have got the sofa kind of up against the wall so it might be you could argue that it's better to use the sofa perhaps as a, as a reference point as well uh, that, maybe that's something that we could try okay so there's a few sort of uh, issues there the other issue as well is that uh, there's a lot of curtain covering this wall here which kind of it would have been better if I could see a lot of the wall there so a few drawbacks with what I've done but important to bring those out so that we can kind of understand how we could do things better so that the more information we have in terms of the position of the camera and the position of objects relative to each other the more accurately we, we can kind of uh, uh, get this match moving working okay um, the other thing uh, as well is looking at the starting point of our match move so here I can't really see any of the wall here and actually a good plan is to kind of go to say frame uh, what are we on here frame 60 65 something like that uh, where I can see the wall on the other side of this sofa I've got that, that gives me a long bit of wall there to kind of line things up against okay so that's uh, really sort of examining the footage, okay? What I want to do is go into Maya. I'm going to move my footage to say uh, frame 60. So that's sort of good that's sort of better starting point. I'm going to go into the perspective view and add a plane. So I'm going to go create polygon plane. So this is going to be a plane that we're going to create to line up against. Um, I just want to check the size of the plane so um, again I have got the measurements it was um, uh, 537 centimeters um, but as I say that's not going to be much use to us the width of that wall because we can't see the entire wall in a single shot. Okay so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set this to a sort of 5 by 5 sort of set there 
Another thing we can do is we've got this display layer here, and if you haven't got that open, you can just go into Windows uh, General Editor's uh, display layer editor here. Okay, and what you can do is when you've got the plane selected, so you select the plane, hit this button here, and it'll create a new layer with that plane in it. Uh, and the reason for doing this is we can double click on here, and I can select a color then uh, and actually have that layer sort of in a more sort of highlighted color that's easy to see against the background. The other thing that can cause a problem as well is these these grids. This grid can kind of make things a bit difficult to see. So uh, if you want to, you can get rid of the grid. Uh, I'm not going to get rid of it right now, but if you need to, you can just get rid of the grid. Just go into show and you can toggle the grid on and off. Okay. Right, I'm going to go back into my uh, AF101 camera now that's been set up and I'm going to uh, position my camera so I'm going to zoom it out and you can see the grid is actually causing me a problem I'm just going to go and move the grid off here we go I can see the thing properly now uh, and then I'm going to move my camera okay so I want to move my camera around I'm not moving the object around this is a, kind of a bit of a weird illusion the plane is staying still I'm not moving this plane around I'm just moving the camera around okay and what I want to do is try and get a to a position. In fact, what might be useful is uh, if I can see where my camera is. Yeah, it's not it's not where I'd expect it to be. Um, in fact, what I would be tempted to do uh, is roughly kind of move it forward a little bit. I'm going to move it forward a little bit, not too far forward. Okay, now this should give me a better idea of what this camera is going to look like. Yeah, so what I've done there is I roughly knew where it would have been in the studio and I've kind of just used that. That's not the best way to do it, you're much better off properly triangulating it. Um, I'm also going to use the overscan feature here that we set up earlier just to kind of get a better idea of how that's going to look. Okay, it's really important that we have a really good starting point. So I, I think that's quite good as a starting point. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. I'm just going to just check my overscan. Yeah, I'm kind. I'm quite happy with that. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to put. Um, uh, I'm going to. I'm going to take the sofa. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've got measurements for the sofa here. Uh, So I'm, I'm going to take uh, measurements for the sofa. I've, I've, I've just all I've done is measure the uh, the height, width, and depth of the sofa, and I measured the height actually up against these uh, arms here. Okay, so imagine I'm just kind of making a cube out of this sofa. Okay, if I go into the perspective view, I'm going to go uh, modify create uh, cube. Okay. Uh, I think I did a subdivision cube there for some reason. Polygon cube, there we go. I can just drag and change that. Okay. I want to set the. Uh, also, I can add this cube to the layer here. So uh, let's have a look. I should be able to. Uh, hang on. I think if I right click on the layer, yeah, add selected objects to the layer. So I can add that to the layer and make that red as well. Okay, and I can go into the polycube uh, shape here, and uh, actually polycube input here, and set the height and width again. Again, I've got it measured in meters, so my uh, I've got uh, the width of it being uh, 16 uh, one, 165 centimeters, so that would be 1.65 meters. So we need to obviously be aware of what units what I've measured in and what units we've got going on in Maya. Uh, which is meters inside Maya, and then the uh, depth is going to be 0 0.5055, and the height is, uh, uh, in fact, sorry, I've got that wrong, 
the depth is 0.810 and the height is uh, uh, 716 or point 716. Let's have a look. Okay. Right. Um, so that's that position there. Now, uh, obviously, this is going to be uh, the key thing is obviously this sofa is on the floor, so we want to keep it on this plane. We don't want to move it around, okay? But we, it is going to be on the back wall somewhere, so it's probably not going to be right on the back wall, but we can say it's probably going to be very close to the back wall, okay? So here's where the sofa is, and, and what we can see is our camera could really do with being a little bit further forward if we look at uh, the position of things, okay? Uh, let's have a look, yeah, yeah our camera could do with being further forward so I can actually dolly my camera forward now Ooh, let's just do that again I can dolly my camera forward see so that and then hopefully that will help me sort of fit the width of the sofa obviously I haven't got the position of this sofa exactly right so I can always move this sofa along here a little bit to kind of get it in a better position especially as I'm going to be moving this wall back so again I'm going to be moving this wall back you can see how I'm kind of juggling the three things to get an idea of how this should fit this is looking good <coughs> oh sorry okay so that's really helped me kind of you know as soon as I put that sofa in I could see that my camera even though the orientation was right it was too far forward okay so now if I look at my perspective view again okay that's my camera and then this is my uh, this is my sofa. Okay, so that's, that's looking good. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, add my uh, table to this. Okay. Uh, so again, I know that the uh, and in fact that's not bad. I'm wondering whether the sofa could go. Ooh, I'm not entirely happy with the way it's lined up here. I'm wondering if I pushed that back a little bit to the side, whether that would work more accurately. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think that's a reasonably accurate sort of portrayal where that sofa would be. It wouldn't be right up against the wall. But I think I can get away with moving it back a little bit. Okay. Um... Now what I'm going to do is create the table, so that's going to be another cube, and then hopefully uh, that should confirm that we've got things in a sort of good position. So I'm going to go uh, into my perspective view again. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, let's move this around. Go create uh, polygon primitives cube. Okay, and create another cube. And again, I've got my measurements of the table that I had, so I'm going to add this cube to this layer, and then I'm going to go into here and adjust my measurements. So uh, the width of the table was 0.75, so that's 75 centimeters by 55 centimeters. Uh, that's oh, sorry, that's the depth, and then the height uh, I had at. Uh, uh, seven one point seven one six. In fact, actually, the chair height I think I've got slightly wrong should be point seven zero. Let's have a look what difference that makes. Uh, let's have a look through our camera. That's not caused me too much of a problem changing that chair height. Uh, I think that's fine. I'm going to stick with that. That's okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do is hide, pick out this cube here, okay? And just and you can see that if I move the cube, I can move this in position. And what should happen if everything's kind of working out, which it kind of is, it could be better, but this should match the table again. So this seems to suggest that uh, again I could do with dollying out the camera a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to just move it out a little bit. 
Again, I don't want to move this up. Yeah, this table is on our plane. Okay, so it's on the actual plane that we create, it's, it, i.e., it's effectively on the floor. Okay, okay, let's have a look. That's starting to look a little bit better. I'm not entirely happy with the angle. Um, we shall see we can fix that a little bit. So again, once you've got some more items in here, we can kind of refine things a little bit. So look, so I'm going to refine the position of the floor, uh, and then I'm going to refine the position of this table. find the position of that sofa. I'm not going to get too het up about the position of that sofa. I think that's uh, working fairly well anyway. Uh, and it's kind of an awkward shape really to line up properly. I'm really going to focus on this table, I think. Uh, let's just check my measurements again. Let's have a look. Uh, 0 0.75550. Yeah. Okay. So again, I think it's not lining up brilliantly, this uh, table. Let's have a look. Um, I don't want to move it up and down. In fact, something that's already happened with that table it has already moved up and down that's probably me earlier so look uh, yeah if I just do uh, if I take a side view so look can I see the table maybe in the front view here we go I can see the table in the front view here and uh, I can see that actual fact yeah so I can actually see that my table and my and my sofa were not 100% lined up with the floor so it is worth going in that side view and kind of refining it which kind of creates an interesting position now with my camera so I'm thinking now if I can actually move my camera up a little bit and maybe back, dolly it out a little bit. In fact, uh, kind of causing problems with the floor position. I'm wondering if I can just move this sofa around a little bit. Hmm. See, it does suggest that I need to kind of dolly the camera out a bit, so I'm going to move the camera out. So again, it's just trying to get everything sort of lined up. As best as possible. Let's have a look how this table looks now. Again, I'm not convinced by the height of that. Well, that is what we've got measured. That does suggest that it should be kind of here. That's looking a bit better. I move it a bit further forward. Okay. And then move this chair back. That's looking better. How does that look? Now, because we've got a... Obviously, we could refine the alignment of these pieces of furniture in much more detail, and if we took better measurements, we would uh, have a start, better starting point with the camera in the first place. 
I'm going to, for better or worse, perhaps stick with that. I don't know. I'm wondering whether, I'm wondering whether I could actually, uh, if I actually raise the camera up a little bit, would that help? don't know that doesn't seem to be ideal okay we could spend a lot more time refining this and I'm, I'm not 100% happy with this but we're gonna take this as a stopping point and you can kind of move it around and really refine the camera position and resolve this okay but these cubes should really line up you know especially with this table you can really take the time to really line it up properly okay once you've got a sort of starting position um, quite often what you want to do is stop the camera from being uh, you know, for, from being able to move the camera around. So quite often it's good if you just select the camera, once you're happy with the position, we can actually select some of these. Obviously what we're going to do is rotate it in the Y axis, because uh, that's the up axis. Okay, but You can select these layers and then what we can do is just lock them. So what that means is we can't accidentally kind of move this around now. Okay, The camera is effectively locked. Okay. Um, now, uh, now what we can do is I can then uh, I can then s and then what I want to do is then animate the camera moving around. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go and uh, I'm just going to so I I've got a starting position here. So before I move to another frame. I can just literally keyframe this right now, so I can go uh, key selected. So I've now inserted a keyframe here, okay. And what I can then do is sort of move. What what I what I'm probably going to do is just move to another point in this pan. Uh, probably let's say uh, over to here. Let's let's move to this point here, shall we? Okay. Yeah, let's move to this point here where I can see. I'm going to keep it so I can see most of the table in the shot like that. Okay. So I'm going to move to this point here, and then what I'm going to do is uh, rotate this. So if I select this rotate Y, and then just with my middle mouse, you, you can do, you can change the values manually, which I will do in a bit to refine it. But to get a, a first sort of position, you can kind of select it, and then with the middle mouse button, just hold it inside the scene somewhere and then move it from left to right and that kind of gives you a sort of starting point and it is kind of lining up okay uh it could be better if we had a better starting point i think this would work better once you get it sort of reasonably close you can kind of refine the position of it a little bit more so i'm going to go four we want to go less than four so i'm going to go minus 3.6 okay uh Seven, something like that. Okay, and um, so we're going to have that as our starting point. Okay, uh, sorry, that's our uh, as our. Uh, we'll have that as our end point for our, for what we're trying to work with uh, for, for sort of demonstrating this bit here. So I'm going to then go right click. Hang on, right click. And key selected. Okay. And uh, so what I've done is I've got a keyframe at frame 60, keyframe at 112. Okay. Let's just imagine we work on this bit of the frame here. So we've got a couple of seconds worth that we're working on here. If I set my start frame to 160, and you know, sometimes it's, it's better to sort of focus on a few frames rather than try and tackle the whole thing. Now, what I can do is, is I can kind of move between these frames. Okay. And you can see, obviously, I've done the pan by hand. It's not a hundred percent smooth pan. So what I could do. Uh, so what I want to do is, from frame sixty, find out where it's moving the furthest from my frame. In fact, you can kind of almost see that it's kind of coming back into shot here. That's another thing to look for as well. You can see where it's coming back into shot, and actually, it's almost worth seeing if I can find a frame in here where it's kind of in line. So again, I'm just looking for the table to be central into this cube here. 
and I'm going to go for that. So I can see that actually at frame 88, it's kind of correct anyway. So again, I can just add an extra keyframe. Now, if I go back, what I'm looking for is really the point at which this is the furthest away from where it should be. So I'm going to go for this point here. Yeah, I'm going to go for this point here, okay? Then what I'm going to do is, again, just anywhere on the screen with the middle mouse button, just use it to rotate it. There we go. Get it, get it as close as possible. That's not bad, actually. Okay. And then I can key that, key selected. And then, again, just refine it. So you can see it's just going where it's the furthest away from the table. Okay. So again, I'm going to just do this manually, I think. Uh, I think I want to reduce it. 16.5. Okay. It's a little bit too far. 16.6. That feels better. Maybe 7. Maybe 16.65. Okay. And once you're happy with it, again, insert another keyframe so you see we're just adding keyframes here we, we don't want to keyframe every frame because that's where you start getting sort of jittery movement okay uh, you want to have try and have it as smooth a movement as possible so you want to avoid putting lots of keyframes in okay so again here we are keyframe here I'm gonna go and reduce that to say four that looks good perhaps maybe five maybe 4.5. Let's go with that. Key selected. So you can see now my pan is really sticking to this table. Okay, I'm really happy with that. That's looking really nice. Okay. Uh, again, and then again with this large section here. And my, my smooth is obviously much, my, my pan is getting a bit smoother here. So I don't think there's a lot of work to do at all on this, actually. If anything, in fact, I'm going to leave that. That looks good. Let's move it up. So we can see that we've got a discrepancy in our frames here. Let's have a look. So where is it the furthest away? It's a long way off for a number of frames. I'm going to go for this frame here. Okay, uh, I think we're going to have to just do this again numerically. Uh, gone the wrong way, sorry. Let's go to 6. Keyframe. Let's have a look. Move this back. I'm happy with that. That's looking good. And it's kind of moving a little bit too far over to to the right here a little bit. So I'm just gonna. Uh, to this a little bit. I'm thinking that's looking good. Something like that. Maybe even a little bit more. Key that. Let's have a look. Okay. So I'm not in entirely happy with our starting point, but we have got uh, we have got a really good match move here. You've got a nice sort of smooth move here. So what, what we're doing, and obviously I can take that principle and use that to match the, the entire pan uh, uh, in within this video. Okay, um, but the key part is we, 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 we start, we keyframe our lined up frame. I then move it to the extreme end of the pan. OK, uh, I didn't in the, I didn't move it all the way in this case because I would have lost track of the table. So I moved it as far as I could without losing track of the table. I will then have to obviously what I'd have to do is continue this pan, perhaps um, uh, perhaps put some circles in or cylinder in where this drum kit is and then use that to help me do it. 
or uh, perhaps track the corner of the wall or the baffles or something like that. I have got the measurement of the baffles, so I could use that as well to help me uh, 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 refine that movement. Okay, so um, yeah, that's the general approach. What I'm going to do now is just in the uh, perspective view, I'm going to grab a, I'm just going to add a cylinder polygon cube. Okay, drag. It's going to create a small cylinder. Okay, uh, sorry, cube, sorry. Uh, and I'm going to move this in the side view. It's going to put that at the exact height of the table. Okay, and let's move that along. Oh, no, that's not what I wanted. And move that along to match the position of the table. In fact, I'm going to try and move this into a top view. Uh, and great, we are over the table. That's what I wanted. Great. So I've got this cube on the table here. Okay. And I'm going to have that. Uh, and then what I'm going to then do is I'm going to put that on a, on, a, on a completely separate layer. So here's a new layer with the cube on it. We're going to make all these other layers that we're working on invisible. And then just go into view. Uh, and then go flat shading okay so we can actually see this cube um, slight concern is it's just black that wasn't what I was expecting sorry uh, use default lighting oh yes okay somehow I switched the default lighting off and then what I'm going to do is so that cube should be locked to that table now and if I animate that you can kind of see yes so now once I've done all this I can kind of position things into my scene and they will lock onto it. What I'm going to do is just do a quick play blast of that sequence, just of that section of the animation. And so this should have given you the general approach. We we can refine this and we can do take this a lot further and, 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 and make make this a lot sharper. But this should give you a sort of starting point uh, in terms of uh, uh, match moving. Okay, there we are, brilliant, there we pan that through, so there we go, and that's rent, That's working really nicely, I think that, that cube's locking on well, it, it is floating a little bit here, but in fact, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that, I'm quite happy with that, okay, so that ends my tutorial on uh, match moving, so the key part is obviously positioning your uh, geometries uh, in the first place. Try and get a more accurate camera position than, than I did. Uh, position your plane. Line it up with the, with the with the floor. Typically, a floor is a good starting point, but whatever you can use as a baseline. If you don't see the, haven't got the floor, you might have something else that works as a really good baseline. Uh, and then use that to line it up. Then add your other objects. Refine the camera position, and once you're happy with it, uh, you can then uh, then do your animation. Uh, you know, key keyframe the extremes of the animation first, and then refine the middle parts where it deviates from from the uh, where it deviates the most. Okay.